Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbigato. Welcome to today. This evening begins Passover. So today we're going to look at communion and examining our heart, not judging other people's hearts, but examining our heart. Amen. So as you join on, I have got the unleavened bread and I have got communion, the vine of the grape. And so when we look at Passover, it is about the body of Christ and his blood. And as we examine our hearts, that when we take this, we recognize the new covenant and we recognize the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. And so, as you join on, I just pray the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Peace be unto your heart. And I pray that the anointing of the spirit of the fear of the Lord be upon each and every one of you. Over the last several days, it has been going on for a week now, God has been visiting me in the night hour and he has been bringing scripture and I have been staying up most of every night for the last several days where the Lord is just pouring such an accounting, bringing the word of truth, Hebrews 4, 12, that double-edged sword and going to my intents and motives. And now looking at my life, if I had a video camera and took you with me, you wouldn't really think much about the things I do and think that it was sin. But you know what? God knows the heart. He sees things that we cannot. The heart is deceitful, friends, and we have to examine ourselves regularly, daily in our lives. You know, you can repent for a thing, but it could just be with your mouth and not with your heart. And we want today to really get to the heart. So I'm going to bring scripture to you about examining the heart. And I'm going to read what God has put on my heart to read for that examination within scripture. And then we are going to go into communion. I'm first going to read from Mark 14, 22 through 25 about what Jesus said in regard to communion and then I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 11, and I'm going to get to that place in Scripture that we are to examine ourselves. And then I'm going to read James 4 as we listen to the Word of Truth and truly examine ourselves. And now, I don't know if this is going to prick you like it did me, but for over a week, God has just been waking me up and showing me any area in my members with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, that I am to examine my heart, and I am to repent. And so God gave me James 4 to read for our examination, and then I will go back to 1 Corinthians 11, and we will enter into communion with the practice and remembrance of what our Lord and Savior told us to do at this time of the feast at Pesach, Passover. And so let me read Mark 14, 22 through 25. And I'm going to read you the communion elements as it's even spoken of our Lord and Savior. This is a practice we are to keep. It is a memorial unto God and Passover is the symbolism of Christ. Amen. Mark 14, 22, out of the Amplified Classic. And while they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, praised God, gave thanks to it, and asked them to bless it to their use. Then he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He also took a cup of the juice of grapes and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and they all drank of it and he said to them this is my blood which ratifies the new covenant the blood which is being poured out for on account of many 
Solemnly and surely I tell you, I shall not again drink of the fruit of the vine till that day when I drink of it of a new and a higher quality of God's kingdom. And so that is Mark 14, 22 through 25. That is Jesus Christ at the Last Supper to do in remembrance and commemoration of his crucifixion and the atonement of his blood for our sins and the body he has given his life, eternal life for us. Amen. So now let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. And I'm going to read about the examination before communion. And then we're going to enter into scripture of examination. And I'm going to read James 4. And then I will have a silence. And I just ask that in that silence, you offer unto God repentance and examination of your heart as the Lord has quickened you. Amen. And then afterwards, we will take of communion. And so 1 Corinthians 11, Scripture says 27. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of profaning and sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man thoroughly examine himself and only when he has done, so should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning and recognizing with due appreciation that it is, the, that it is Christ's body, eats and drinks a sentence, a verdict of judgment upon himself. That careless and unworthy participation is the reason many of you are weak and sickly and quite enough of you have fallen into sleep of death for if we searchingly examined ourselves detecting our shortcomings and recognizing our own condition we should not be judged and penalty decreed by the divine judgment but when we fall short and are judged by the lord we are disciplined and chastened so that we may not finally be condemned to eternal punishment along with the world. So saints, this is the chapter of examination that God wants me to read from James 4. I will read James 4 and then after James 4, we will enter into silent prayer, which means I cannot hear you. And so offer unto God an offering of your heart in full surrender where you enter into the place of searching and examining your heart and asking for repentance, asking for mercy and grace. Amen. James 4, beginning in verse 1 from the Amplified Classic. What leads to strife, discord, and feuds? And how do conflicts, quarrels, and fightings originate among you? Do they not arise from your sensual desires that ever warring in your body, bodily members? You are jealous and covet what others have, and your desires go unfulfilled, so you become murderers. To hate is to murder, as far as your hearts are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and are not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment, the happiness that you seek. So you fight and war. You do not have because you do not ask. Or you do ask God for them and yet you fail to receive them because you ask with wrong purpose and evil selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it in sensual pleasures. You are like an unfaithful wives, having illicit love affairs with the world and breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes his stand as an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that scripture is speaking to no purpose that says, 
The spirit whom he has caused to dwell in us yearns over us, and he yearns for the spirit to be welcomed with a jealous love. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit, to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. That is why he says, God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. So be subject to God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Get your soiled hands clean. Realize that you have been disloyal, wavering individuals with divided interest, and purify your hearts of your spiritual adultery. As you draw near to God, be deeply penitent and grieve. Even weep over your disloyalty. Let your laughter be turned to grief and your mirth to dejection and heartfelt shame for your sins. Humble yourselves, feeling very insignificant in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. He will lift you and make your lives significant. My brethren, do not speak evil about or accuse one another. He that maligns a brother or judges his brother is maligning and criticizing the law and judging the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a practicer of the law, but a censor and a judge of it. One only is the lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. The one who has absolute power of life and death. But you who are you that you presume to pass judgment on your neighbors? Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and spend a year there and carry on our business and make money. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen tomorrow. What is the nature of your life? You are really but a wisp of vapor, a puff of smoke, a mist that is visible for a little while and then disappears into thin air. You ought instead to say, if the Lord is willing, we shall live and we shall do this or that thing. But as it is, you boast falsely and your presumption and your self-conceit. All such boasting is wrong. So any person who knows what is right to do, but does not do it, to him it is sin. Saints, the law is to expose sin. The blood of Jesus is is to give us grace as we acknowledge our sin and to walk in God's mercy and truth in grace. So right now, humble yourselves and let's enter into a prayer of examination, repentance, and silence. Now we will enter into communion, and I will read the scriptures from 1 Corinthians 11. But before we do 1 Corinthians 11, beginning in verse 23, I want to pray after our examination as we enter into a most sacred time. God, we humble, humble ourselves before you. We acknowledge that we have been sinners saved by grace, by the blood of Jesus Christ. We refuse and turn away and renounce the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We thank you, Father, that you have shown us our error, and we repent humbly before you, and enter into this sacred time of the acknowledgement of the very Son of God, of His body 
and his blood in Jesus name. Now I will read 1 Corinthians 11 and we will partake of communion. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. For I received from the Lord himself that which I passed on to you. It was given to me personally that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was treacherously delivered up and while his betrayal was in progress, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you do this to call me affectionately to remembrance. Similarly, when supper was ended, he took the cup also saying, this cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood do this as often as you drink it to call me affectionately to remembrance for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup you are representing and signifying and proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes. God bless you and enter into this evening with an amazing grace of Passover. God bless you.